The topic of this lesson is regression. And regression is the process of taking data from some kind of collection, plotting it on a graph like we've done here with these, these black points, and then finding an equation that returns as close as possible to those same points when the same inputs are given into the equation as are given into your study. What I'm going to do is take some data from example C in your text here. And I'm going to use it as a sort of background here as we're discussing the topic. In example C, it says that there's a table there that shows all of the numbers of millions of students enrolled in U.S. elementary schools in the given list of years, starting in 1990, uh, running straight through to 1998, and then it kind of jumps up a little bit to 2003. But it has the number of millions of students enrolled in elementary schools for each of those years. What they've done is taken those data points, 1990, they assumed was year zero, so we're you know, basically just using the last digit here, and set that as year zero on a graph, and then increased years going off to the right along the x-axis, and then started plotting millions going up on the y-axis, so that in 1990, where there was 26.6 millions, we have a point at zero, so year you know, 1990, and 26.6. And then the next year, 1991, was x equals 1 and y equals 26.6 again, so we had two points side by side, and so on and so forth. So by the time we were done, we get this kind of, it almost looks slightly randomized graph here. There isn't a curve, there isn't a straight line, there isn't a, a you know, a, a general curve, it just kind of goes up and down and up and down. And we could actually write an equation that would follow each of these points precisely if we wanted. But that equation would have a number of powers. It'd be, you know, x to the what, ninth or tenth power here, one for each point. And then, um, in addition, it would, it would not give us an overall sort of generalized average about what's happening over time as well as it would if we could find a lower level equation which would sort of even out the differences between those points and make either a kind of a smooth curve like this or maybe a straight line. So the idea behind this lesson is to see what happens as we use different kinds of models, different kinds of, uh, of graphs to see which one gives us the closest approximation to the data we have. So what I'm going to do here is bring up the first option here, the first kind there was, was a linear regression. A linear regression just means that they had a straight line. So by put, putting that information into a calculator and telling it to do a linear regression, the calculator comes up with the line, the straight line that does the best job of meeting all that information. Let me hide this other text here so we can show the, show the graphs. Oops, I had a bunch of other junk I drew over top. Sorry about that. Get rid of that real quick. Get it out of the way. There we go. Um, so that, that line right there is the straight line that comes the closest to meeting all the points on the graph. Now it may or may not be the overall best fit, but it's the best straight line fit. And we can see it actually does pretty well. We can get a pretty good approximation, say, uh, you know, maybe uh, 10 years into it, which would be year 2000, right? We could guess that it'd be about 32, um, which is probably pretty close given all the other data that we have. But the next option we have would be to tell the calculator to do a quadratic regression, which means that it can use squared terms. And now you'll see instead of the straight blue line like we had for the linear regression, now we have this curve for the quadratic regression that kind of comes in along here. And it actually does an even better job. It kind of stays right in between those points all the way. And you can see off toward the right here where it sort of curves up, it nails that last point right in place. Whereas the blue one kind of went below it a little here. It sort of dropped out. It wasn't quite as accurate on near the end. Then the third kind of model that we could uh, ask the calculator to do would be an exponential regression. An exponential regression here is the orange plot, and you can see it's the top line up here. And it does, again, does reasonably well, but this one started, starts taking off about midway, and from then on it's just pretty consistently a little too high, and it doesn't really come back down to what we want. So if we compare the three different possibilities here, the one that comes closest to hitting all those points exactly right is the quadratic, the red line right in the middle. So as we're comparing the different possibilities for regression, in this particular example, it looks like the best possibility would be to have the red line, the quadratic line here, and do a quadratic regression to be able to predict where our future points would be.